Today I'm making three easy vegan pastas, perfect for a weeknight dinner as they all come together in the same time it takes to boil some pasta. We're going to be doing a classic vodka pasta as well as an alfredo and a spinach spaghetti. And all three of these pastas have a creamy element and for that you have a few options. The first is a good old cashew cream which just means covering half a cup of cashews in hot water for about 10 minutes and then we're going to blend them up with half a cup of unsweetened plant milk. The other option is to get about a half to three-fourths cup of silken tofu, and if you go that route, you just add it to the blender to get it nice and smooth, and I personally love both options. The cashews are a bit richer, but honestly, side by side, you can hardly tell the difference. Tofu might win since it's cheaper and easier, but if you have a soy allergy, then cashews win. So whatever works for you will work. All right, first let's do what might be my surprise favorite, the spinach spaghetti. So get your pot going to a boil and this sauce should be done by the time the spaghetti is cooked, if not sooner. I also made a version using this squiggly spaghetti, AKA fusilli corto. Both pastas work great. I honestly think any pasta shape will work with this sauce. No matter which one you use, just salt your water and add the pasta to the water once it's boiling and cook according to the instructions. And for the spinach sauce, first we're gonna wash about five ounces of spinach. That's about as much as you get in a typical bundle or bag at the store. I didn't include the stems in my test because I assumed they'd make the sauce grainy or bitter, but let me know if I'm wrong about that. After that, we simply add everything to a blender and no need to make the cashew cream separately for this one. So in go the cashews, followed by a half cup of unsweetened plant milk and then two tablespoons of olive oil, three to four cloves of garlic, a quarter cup or four grams of fresh basil, and a heaping third cup or 10 grams of fresh Italian parsley. And you can obviously add more or less to your taste. Then one tablespoon of nutritional yeast, one heaping teaspoon of miso paste, I'm using light yellow, one teaspoon of Calabrian chilies for a little heat, and then one to two tablespoons of lemon juice. I usually go for at least two, but start with one and adjust to your taste. Next, add in some of the spinach and blend it up and then simply add more of the spinach as it gets blended, taste for salt and black pepper and adjust as needed and give it a final blend. And once it's tasting good, we're gonna add it to a pan to heat it through. Now normally I'd use a nonstick pan because admittedly I've been intimidated by stainless steel, but I've been really digging these stainless steel pans by today's sponsor, Made In. After testing out these recipes using the stainless steel set, it's clear my apprehension was not warranted. These are super easy to work with and a breeze to clean, and I can see why so many people, including the folks working in kitchens at three Michelin star restaurants, use made-in pans. The heat retention and control is unparalleled with these pans thanks to the premium five-ply stainless steel material, and I honestly feel much more at ease cooking with these than I have with any other stainless steel pans. They are all great, but the saucier might be my favorite as it's not only ideal for making sauces, but it's perfect for boiling small batches of pasta, rice, or veggies. And you all know I only work with brands I dig, and I've been using Made In products for years, and I'm super stoked to have this stainless steel set in my collection now. So if you've been curious about stainless steel or want to upgrade your current set, check out the link in my description to save some money on your order, and thank you Made In for sponsoring this video. Now, once our spinach sauce is heated through, you're going to notice that it's kind of thick and that's okay. We're going to thin it out with some of the pasta water. And if your pasta isn't done cooking right at this point, just keep the sauce warm on low. And once the pasta is cooked to your liking, add it to the pan with the sauce and add as much pasta water as you like. Not only is this going to loosen the sauce up, it's going to make it creamier and emulsified. Taste and adjust for seasoning, finish it off with some vegan parmesan or more Calabrian chilies, red pepper flakes, whatever you like. And honestly, this one is so zip zapping good and delicious and the reason I think I might like it slightly more than the Alfredo and vodka sauce is because it's just as flavorful but a bit lighter. Plus it had a bunch of spinach in it so we are getting the benefits of that. And if you have leftovers, the good news is this stuff passes the goblin test, which if you don't know, means I can eat the leftovers cold straight from the fridge like a goblin. But honestly, I think this is my favorite way to eat spinach and this pasta is in my top 10 favorite pastas for sure. Now let's do another one of my new favorites, the vodka pasta. And traditionally this is made with penne, but you can totally use rigatoni or fusilli. Any small ridge or curly pasta should work well with this sauce. And this is usually made with heavy cream, but again, the cashew cream or silken tofu is gonna to do a great job instead. Get your salted water boiling, and in the meantime, the only other prep we need to do is to dice up one shallot and mince up four garlic cloves. I'm gonna use a saucier pan over medium heat and add in three tablespoons of olive oil, get that shimmering, and then add in the shallot and the garlic. 
A heaping teaspoon of Calabrian chilies, again for some fruity heat. Stir that around for a minute and then add in two tablespoons of nutritional yeast for some cheesiness. Next, we'll add in a whole 4.5 ounce tube of tomato paste. Yep, the whole thing. We're gonna stir that around and toast that for about four minutes or so, making sure we don't burn the tomato paste or the garlic. Reduce the heat to medium low if it feels like it's getting blasted. After that, it's time to add in the titular ingredient, the vodka, and we're gonna do a third cup worth. And look, a lot of folks have explained why vodka makes this dish taste good. Basically, it boils down to science. That said, you can totally leave it out and the dish will still be delicious. The vodka does add a nice boost of flavor to the tomatoes and the garlic in my experience, but if you don't do alcohol, you can totally make this dish without it as well. So we just need to cook that down until the vodka reduces about three to four minutes. And next we're gonna add in one 14 ounce can of tomatoes. Whole or crushed, it doesn't matter to me. I do think the Italians on Instagram might cry over crushed tomatoes. So I'm using whole tomatoes that I'll crush up with my spatula. I'll cook those over medium heat for about four minutes and then we're gonna add in the cashew cream or silken tofu. If using silken tofu, I recommend blending it up until smooth first. Stir that around and cook it for two minutes. Taste and adjust for seasoning. I'm gonna add in some black and red pepper. And now you can totally keep the sauce chunky like this or you can do like I do and blend it up until smooth and luxurious. After blending, this sauce is gonna be probably kinda of thick as well, but again, we can add in some pasta water like before which is what I'll do after I add in my cooked penne. And everyone likes their pasta at different levels of sauciness. So here's what this recipe looks like with a pound of penne. And here's what it looks like with only 10 ounces. Honestly, I like both, but feel free to make yours as saucy as you like. And we can serve this up with some added vegan Parmesan, basil, or parsley. And if you've never had this, it's like a leveled up marinara. It's creamier and the vodka adds another layer of intense flavor as well. I can definitely see why it's been so popular over the past few years. Speaking of popular, Alfredo is one of the most well-known pastas here in the US, and we are making it in the same style. This is not authentic Italian at all, of course. I mean, it's vegan, so it's not even authentic Olive Garden style, but it is super rich and delicious, and I'd say lighter than its dairy counterpart. For the pasta, we are going with the traditional fettuccine, and we're gonna be using a bunch of vegan Parmesan, so you can either use your favorite store-bought or homemade recipe for vegan parm, or you can simply use some nutritional yeast instead. Either is gonna work. And while our fettuccine cooks, I'm gonna add in three tablespoons of vegan butter to a pan over medium heat, let that melt, and then stir in three cloves of minced garlic. Stir that around and toast the garlic for a minute or so, and then we're gonna add in the cashew cream, and we're gonna stir in one cup of vegan Parmesan or a quarter cup of nutritional yeast. At that point, I realized the sauce was way too thick because I forgot to pour in an additional three quarters cup of plant milk along with the cashew cream. So that's what I'm doing now. After mixing that in, I'm gonna add in one teaspoon of Italian seasoning. Once the pasta is cooked, we're gonna add that in, toss it around of course until it's all nice and coated in that rich and creamy sauce, add a squeeze of lemon, taste and adjust for seasoning of course, feel free to add in any pasta water as well if needed, serve with some more vegan Parmesan or parsley, do it up as you do. Heck, you can even whip up some of my tofu chicken and make chicken Alfredo. Either way, this dish put Olive Garden to shame, and I gotta say, eating pasta this whole week was a delight, so I hope you all make one or all of these, and if you do, let me know how it goes. To make my tofu grilled chicken recipe, check out this video right here, and until then, I'll see you all next time.